You've probably noticed how heavily our society relies on synthetic plastic polymers and the negative impacts they're having on our environment. The chemical, thermal, and mechanical properties of these polymers makes them ideal for plastic containers and packaging, but also makes them highly resistant to degradation in the environment. In this video, we're going to explore how graphene oxide and tree gum can be used to make a biodegradable polymer film with potential applications in food packaging. Household items like chairs and measuring cups, appliance housings, deer fencing, some clothing, and of course food packaging all use synthetic polymers. These applications require different plastic polymers with different recycling procedures, making it challenging to properly recycle mixed plastics. This results in plastic waste ending up in landfills, the forests, and the ocean, which generates microplastics persisting for centuries in the environment. In fact, polystyrene and PVC have been recovered from the soil after 30 plus years with no signs of degradation. Although some previous research into biodegradable polymers has been done, many polymers created so far lack the required material properties or still take an extended amount of time to degrade naturally. A new composite polymer of tree gum and graphene oxide exhibits good mechanical and oxygen barrier properties and appears to be a promising candidate for use in food packaging films. Approximately one third of Earth's land area is forested and is heavily utilized by the pulp and paper industry. Imagine how great it would be if you could take the remaining tree materials from the pulp and paper industry and use it to produce a biodegradable polymer film for food packaging. This is exactly what's being done with the new graphene oxide and tree gum composite. First, let's discuss where the tree gum and graphene oxide come from. Resinous trees, such as this one, include species such as pine, fir, and cedar. When these trees are injured, they secrete resins which harden and protect the tree. Some other trees, including the eucalyptus tree and many fruit trees, secrete a mixture of polysaccharides instead, known as natural gum. While resins are toxic, natural tree gums are not and are currently widely used in pharmaceuticals and foods. Tree gums are a naturally biodegradable polymer, however they are water-soluble, brittle, and inflexible, which are not good qualities for packaging films. Graphene oxide can significantly change the material properties of the tree gum, however. First, let's discuss three carbon compounds, graphite, graphene, and graphene oxide. Graphene is a form of carbon where carbon atoms are hexagonally bound in one plane to form a very strong, single sheet. In fact, graphene is the strongest material ever tested. Graphite is a naturally occurring form of carbon which consists of weakly bound sheets of graphene. Graphene oxide is structurally very similar to the very strong graphene, but has oxygen and OH functional groups to make it hydrophilic and easily dispersible in aqueous solution. Graphite is mostly produced through mining, but a new method is being developed to convert tree lignin into graphite. Lignin is a natural polymer that helps give trees their structure, and during paper production, lignin is often removed and burned for energy as does few applications. Instead of burning the lignin, it could be used to produce graphite by pyrolyzing it at 1000 degrees Celsius and then heating it to 2000 degrees Celsius under a hydrogen and argon atmosphere. To produce graphene oxide, graphite must be oxidized and exfoliated to produce single sheets. This is done by adding graphite to a strongly oxidizing solution of sodium nitrate, potassium permanganate, and sulfuric acid and blasting it with ultrasonic waves. The solution oxidizes the graphite to graphite oxide, and then the ultrasonic waves exfoliate the graphite oxide into single sheets of graphene oxide. The graphene oxide is then washed to remove the oxidizing chemicals. Graphene oxide is currently used in polymer composites with low gas permeability for high pressure gas storage, making it a good candidate for improving the material properties of tree gums. Once the graphene oxide and tree gum have been prepared, making the composite is relatively simple. First, the graphene oxide is added at 0.5% concentration to deionize water and sonicated to keep it dispersed in solution. 1% tree gum and 1% glycerol are subsequently stirred into the solution and sonicated for 10 minutes to get an even mixture. The nanocomposite solutions are then left to dry completely at room temperature to form a film. For these composite films, low water vapor transmission rates of 15 grams per meter squared per day and tensile strengths of 15 to 25 megapascals with breaking tensile stresses around 10 to 15 percent have been recorded, depending on the type of tree gum used. The glycerol makes the films flexible and the graphene oxide reduces the water solubility, increases mechanical strength and gives excellent gas barrier properties comparable to other current packaging materials. The hydrogen bonding between the tree gum and graphene oxide also increases the thermal stability of the film, allowing it to be stable up to around 150 degrees Celsius, even after three months of storage. 
Additionally, graphene oxide absorbs UV radiation and reduces degradation from sunlight. All of these properties exceed the results of other comparable biodegradable films and exhibit how tree gum based films could be used to replace some plastic packaging. With around 380 million metric tons of plastic produced annually, transitioning to biodegradable plastic films like the tree gum graphene oxide composite film will significantly reduce microplastic pollution. By sustainably harvesting tree gum and making graphene oxide from extra lignin from pulp and paper production, these new polymer food films can reduce plastic pollution and consumption. Imagine how great it would be if plastic packaging was compostable and didn't have to be recycled. Because these polymers are still in the early research stage, there is no economic analysis on the cost of production, however there are likely a few hurdles to overcome. Firstly, producing graphite through pyrolysis of lignin is very energy intensive and may not be economically viable when compared to traditional mining methods. Secondly, many gum trees only hit optimal production after about 10 years or so, which puts a delay on how quickly tree gum production can be scaled up. To recap, we examined how a biopolymer composite film can be generated from naturally derived graphene oxide and natural tree gum. The biopolymer exhibits ideal material properties for food packaging applications and easily degrades in the environment after a couple of months. Although this film experiences some barriers before upscaling production, it exhibits how biopolymers can be used to reduce plastic pollution in the near future.